this is a test pilot of cooking. So we're gonna make chorizo with some kind of pork that Carl gave us, who is one of the person in the Twitch chat. So yeah, we're gonna make it. Just a word of advice, if you ever buy a peeler, never buy one of these. Buy ones that are like the Y shape. I'll, I'll put a picture of what I'm talking about. It, it's just way better. And if you can, preferably the Japanese one. Uh, because yeah, this is just shites. And it's from KitchenAid, so you would think it would be good, but it's not good. Clean, but we got our peeled potatoes and we're gonna rinse them in just to get all the dirt off them. And then set it on the side. Just move this to the side. So then it asks for some chopped onion. So I have half saved from a while ago. So, that. so either you can just like chop it up, which is what it says. Um, or you can probably slice it. Easy way to do it is you make slices like this, and then you make slices this way, and then you start chopping this way. So um, what you want to do is have this part where it's connecting to face out, or uh, away from you, I guess. And you just cut a little bit, but don't cut all the way through. And be careful of your hands. You want to make the cuts uh, fairly small or like kind of knit tight. I didn't go all the way through. You could go more, but I don't think I need that many onions. So then what you're going to do is start cutting this way inside it too, but not all the way through again. You can make like two, like three or four cuts with these, all right? So then you have something like that. And then you just chop this way now and you should technically get nice chopped onions. Now you don't always have to do it this way, you can do whatever way the fuck you want, but that's just the way I'm doing it. So I think that should be enough onions. I'm just gonna one more. I like onions a lot, so there we go. Chopped onions. Okay, so I'm gonna get a bowl. And then we need to cube our potatoes as well. So I actually don't know how to do it. So let's just see. We can make like sticks of potatoes, I guess, and then maybe it's done the same way. Let's do it this way. Let's see if this is what it makes. Um. Yeah, I think that will work. I was thinking of making like french fries and then cutting it up, but that would take too long, so I guess kind of just giving a rough chop of it would be this way. And I actually probably don't need all three of my potatoes since I didn't have, that's not that much trees though. We'll see. <clears throat> actually, while that's going, I should have done this, so I'm gonna do it now. Before you start prepping, what we probably want to do is have some water boiling because we're going to need to boil this potatoes a little bit. So I have some water boiling here. And then you want to add some salt to it. Or at least that's what the instruction says. I don't have the instruction printed, but I'm just going based on what I read and then just my own cooking knowledge. So I put like two scoops of salt. Um, another size measurement, and then we'll get continuing chopping. Okay, so we have our potatoes. 
So we have the water finally boiling, like legit boiling. So we're gonna put the potatoes in. And I regret not using a big knife because now I have to one by one almost pick the potatoes up. But we'll do it. Let's just... Yeah, be careful when you put it in because there will be backsplash. But if you're a warrior, backsplash means nothing. So, we got that. And then, so we're gonna wait for that shit to probably cook about, I don't know, five minutes again. I'll check up on it um, to see if it's like kind of soft in the middle. I'll just poke it with a knife or something like that and then see when it's done. So yeah, I'll fast forward this bit. So actually, while that's happening, I'm gonna add some scallions, cause I had some, or I think people call it green onions, I call it scallions, uh, whatever. It's cheap to buy in the grocery store, so, and I had some of it laying around, so I'm going to put some in there. Uh, what you wanna do is, when you get scallions, they're not washed really well, and as you can see, they're like pretty gnarly and dirty, so you wanna take the like, top part coat off. and then wash it under just water. Um, no need to dry it or whatever. It's just to get the stickiness out and any like dirt that remains in the crevice here. So yeah. All right, so I'm just going to we go. remove, well, not remove, but I'm gonna just give them a chop. And once you get near the bottom, if the, some of the bottoms are a little bit not like good, then you can just stop there. I'm just gonna stop mine right there. Okay. So let's see if I can pick some of these. Because we don't want to cook all the way, we still want a little bit of give, I think. Yeah, and that's good enough. Probably overdone. So now you want to strain it, uh, or at least dump the water. I'll just dump the water because if I strain it, I feel like uh, I don't. I have like one of those metal strainers, so if I put it through the metal, it probably like break the the potatoes. So let me just. Okay. So that's that. I'm gonna move over this pan because we're gonna be cooking with it. Uh, probably that would be enough. So, yeah. So, what I'm going to do is we're going to start cooking this shit. Um, I didn't say this in the beginning, but they did ask for some chopped garlics. So, if you have fresh garlic, it's probably better to use that. I think I've used all mine, so I'm using this minced garlic, which I bought for test trial. Um, not sponsored by Kirkland, but this garlic is like, okay, it's not the greatest, but it, 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 gets, it gets the bang for its buck. I would still probably go for a uh, fresh, fresh garlic. So yeah, so you put some oil. Um, not sure how much you want to put. Just put however much you think you'll need. And so we got the oil. So it says to make sure it's hot, and then you put it the temperature down to like medium high. Okay. So I put the fire to kind of like medium. So before it was like that, high. Now I'm putting it down to medium high. Uh, it says to put the onions. And so depending on how much garlic you like, put however much you want. I like a lot of garlic. I'm gonna put probably more than normal. About this much, just whatever. Okay. Maybe just a bit more too. Okay. So we got that going. Let me see if I want to use. I think I'm gonna use my tongs. You can use a spatula, but I think it's probably easier to use tongs in this case. We'll see when I get to cooking the uh, putting in the chorizo. So we let that kind of brown. Turn down the temperature just a little bit. Because garlic will actually taste bitter 
if you overcook it, so just watch where if it turns, if your garlic turns brown really fast, that means your temperature is too high, and basically you'll kill your garlic and probably won't get any flavor from it, to be honest. You'll probably get a bitter flavor. So just watch out for that. I'm gonna wait for that. Um, I could put my green onions now, but I like the flavor of green onions, so I'm gonna put it almost close to near the end. I don't wanna cook the, the green onions with the onion, I guess. So. I'm gonna see if it turns just a little bit brown. I don't mind raw onions, but if you sweat your onions to turn sweet, they'll have flavor, so that's what we're going for, maximum flavor. So, I can start smelling that it's basically almost done. And when I'm saying smelling, I can smell like the onion and the garlic all kind of opening up. So I'll just put some of the potatoes in there. So I still have a little bit left over, so just kind of judge, but I think that should be enough. I'll see what happens when I put the trees in there. And we'll see if I need more or not. Just kind of mix that all. Don't like mm, press too hard or whatever, because again, the potatoes are soft. So just give them a light mix. How I'm doing is I'm, I'm using the tong as a spoon and just kind of like turning it over and mixing it in. If you have a spatula, obviously that's a little bit easier too, but okay. I'll do what I gotta do. Okay. And here I'm gonna actually turn the heat a little bit higher, just because I want a little bit of crust on the potato. I'm not sure if I'm gonna get a crust with this or not, but if we let it stand for a bit, it definitely will, so. Don't touch it, put it on high heat, and we'll see if it goes. At this point, I don't think your garlic will burn. Um, leftover remaining ones probably will, but in, in, in general, it won't burn anymore because you have more stuff in the pan. So it is kind of browning, a little bit, ever so slightly. And it probably will look a little bit mashed, but that's fine, whatever. Ain't gotta be perfect. And I didn't salt and pepper this yet. I mean, I salted the water so the, the, the potatoes have a little bit of like flavor in it, but I'm gonna salt and pepper at the very end because I don't know what chorizo actually tastes like, so I don't know if it'll add like its own flavor into the dish or not. Um, if it's not seasoned well enough, then I'll put salt and pepper at the end. getting brown. Yeah. So at this point I'm going to put the chorizo in. Like a third. So I'm going by thirds now. Okay, so there we go. We'll put like two thirds in there. And now I'm going to bring my temperature up just a little bit again. So now it's about, it's about high right now. And break this up a little bit. You want to kind of have like chunks, so you don't want to mush everything. You kind of want to give it a rough chop. And you kind of have it like in pieces and stuff like that, so you can get it mixed in. Mix it with the potatoes, so the potato can get some of the flavor. And at this point, I don't think I should be all end up using the spatula. However you feel. You just let that settle for a bit. Make sure that it's getting like some brown calcification like this. See if I can pull it out. There you go, some brown crustification. Those are always good. So we'll let that sit and do its thing. Again, on medium heat so it doesn't burn. There we go. When you Kind of scoop it under it and see if it's actually creating a crust on the bottom. And some of it is, so that's good. I'm gonna flip it over so the other side could uh, get some as well. And at this point, I think I can add my green onion. Add the green onion. 
in there. Literally not for aesthetic reasons, I just like green onions. So if you don't like green onions, you don't have to put this. And it wasn't in the recipe anyway, so, you know, whatever. So whatever you like. Basically almost like a trezo hash. Give it one more second and then I'm gonna taste it, see if it needs any more seasoning. If not, then it's done. Kind of simple. I'm gonna take a little bit of everything, make sure. It definitely doesn't need salt anymore. The trezo is actually way salty. Or I can put a little bit of black pepper though. It could do with black pepper. Um, no precise measurement, just kind of feel. How much should go? Mm. I do a lot of my cooking with eyeballs and just feeling it. So. Okay, and then give it one final taste. Hopefully, the final. Yep, I think it's done. So taste-wise, don't expect anything spectacular. This is not mind-blowing food. Um, but it does taste good. Chorizo is nice. The potato gives it a nice like offset. Because if you're kind of like kind of me, like the people that like starch, then the potato is nice to it. The green onions, of course, doesn't give much. It's just green onions. But yeah. So we are done. So I'm gonna plate this and eat this with my boyfriend and yeah. All in all, probably give this, especially using um, the Johnsonville Trezo brand. Here you go. I'd probably give this uh, maybe like a seven on a scale of one to ten. So ten being the best food. But yeah, I will see you guys later. Thank you for watching this pilot episode. I guess if you like it, let me know. If you don't like it, I'll just continue not recording it and I just cook at my own leisure. I mean, this is leisure too, but instead of setting up everything and just cooking where I can get it go. There we go.